it working? Yep. Okay, cool. All right, good. Welcome, welcome. We are back this week with our new episode of Ask Flourish. This is number nine. I forgot to put that in the notes. So number nine, we are going to be working with um, graphite chalk paint today. We get a lot of questions about whether or not people are doing it the right way or how they should paint, um, especially with, with graphite and with dark colors. Um, and I'm just gonna show you a few things so you can kind of make that, that judgment for how you wanna paint. The tools and the direction that you apply your paint make a really big difference. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how light reflects off the surface, um, especially once you wax and you get a little bit of shine to it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. You want to tip that down on the board? You know when you get a good. Yep. They're perfect. All right. So the first question that we get a lot is whether or not you can use a regular paintbrush. Um, so this is a standard polyester nylon um, Wooster brush. Um, Purdy is another popular brand. And these are wonderful brushes for latex. I love the, you know, the angled sash on it. Of course, that's what we're used to painting with. Um, and you certainly can paint with this, but it's not first choice, and, and I'll show you why. So when I'm painting, typically you're gonna wanna load up a fair amount of paint, and I'm gonna work on here. Can you see that okay on there? Do we need to adjust a little bit? And I'm going to need to keep loading up my brush. And putting that paint on there. And I'm painting with the grain in a more traditional way of applying paint. And I need to use quite a bit more paint doing it this way than I do when I use a natural bristle brush with chalk paint. I need to keep dipping back into my can here to move the paint along the surface. So I can brush off in one direction to keep my brush strokes, you know, going the same way. Which is how you would typically paint, but I'm going to show you why you may want to consider doing a little bit differently. Okay, that's enough of a section. You get an idea, and I'm going to kind of move my brush strokes in one direction like I would if I were using latex. All right, then your other choice is a natural bristle brush like this, a little inexpensive brush. and putting that paint on. I can push the paint, you can see, further with this natural bristle brush than I can that purdy brush. And the idea behind using chalk paint is that you're gonna get a nicer amount of coverage if you can really push the paint further along the surface. So again, I'm painting in the direction of the grain but you may want to consider painting a little bit differently. So I'm gonna show you with this brush, painting the Annie way, which is just moving the paint along the surface in any which direction. I'm using less paint using this brush, but I'm still having to kind of work hard to get it across the surface. Okay, then we have the, um, the oval natural bristle brush, which has a lot more bristles. The way that they're tapered really helps push the paint along the surface. Get that in there and I'm going to paint in multiple directions and I'm really 
just trying to get the paint across the surface in a nice thin coat. Not only is it gonna dry faster like this, but I'm gonna use less paint. I can really go back into that area where the paint is heavier and drag it along. And you can see how much further my paint is going and how much more quickly I can get that paint to cover across the surface. It's also gonna dry faster because it's on nice and thin. So those are different methods of application. You can see on here where I've painted here, I can already see some areas that are starting to dry and I applied this area last. This is the glossiest area here and that was the first paint that I put on. So it should be starting to dry by now and there's only a little tiny bit here at the top, otherwise it's still pretty heavy and you can see a lot of the brush strokes down through there. You see all the different directions of the brush strokes. You've got straight, straight, random, and random. All right, I am going to move on. And we're gonna talk about waxing a little bit. So the first thing we're going to look at is this board here, where I used the, um, the nylon brush and I painted with the grain. So the first thing here, you can see the different strokes. Hopefully you can see that on there, where you can see some white, some light reflection, um, and you can definitely see where I have some little bit thinner areas, a little bit thicker areas. You can see where all of my brush strokes have gone in this sample. Um, the graphite paint, the darker the color, so the graphite is the darkest, is going to show the most imperfections. So when you put it on like this, a lot of times, even before we get this coat of wax on, we have a lot of customers that come in and say, my paint looks uneven. Why does it look uneven? Well, it's absorbing the light in different ways. So I waxed this area and it still looks uneven. We really need a second coat of wax on here. On this half, I went ahead and put, um, I sanded it a little bit and I used this 320 grit sandpaper, which really is just gonna smooth it down. I'm not trying to distress it and take anything off. I'm just smoothing it, and you're gonna see the difference there. So I'm gonna wipe that sanding dust off a little bit, and we're gonna put some clear wax on. Oh, I left the clear wax over there. Thank you. Oh, we have this darn fly in here today. <laughs> All right, so I've got my, um, my waxing um, wax brush here. This nice flat wax brush does the best job in getting, getting the clear wax down into the texture. And hopefully you will get a nice waxing lesson here as a bonus. So here's my wax brush. I've got some wax on there. And I'm gonna make sure that I have a cloth with me as I'm doing this as well. So I want to work in sections. And you can do a swirl if you want. You can go back and forth. I like to move in different directions to make sure that I get the wax down into all the crevices. I'm gonna work in a section like that. And then I'm just going to wipe off the excess. You can see how the wax is being pushed down in there. Go back this way. Pull that off. So right away, I can already see that this is looking more even with that second coat of wax. It is nearly impossible to get an even application of wax on the first go around. It's going to soak in a little bit differently. So that second coat of wax is not giving you a waxy buildup. 
So you can see I'm not leaving a bunch of fingerprints behind. It's not sticky and wet. I'm just making sure that it's absorbed evenly throughout the whole board. Deb, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Yes. Deb Papish commented your cloth worked great, no lint. Oh, good, wonderful. Thanks, Deb. And Jamie Worf just said, I just used graphite and old white to paint my dining room table and chairs. Oh, I love that combo. It's so classic. Beautiful. So this half here, I sanded. And we have a lot of people ask whether or not you need to sand in between coats. I'm going to let you just take a look for yourself and decide whether or not you think it's a necessary step. So putting another coat on here. Again, we just want this to be an even coat of application. So that second coat of wax goes a lot further than the first one because it's only going to soak in where it's not fully absorbed and then it's just gonna glide across the surface where it's already filled in. I'm just really pulling off in one direction. And then I'm gonna let that dry before I buff it. Let that dry for a couple minutes and polish that and then have you guys take a look and see what you think. Okay, then I've got a board here that I have rolled. And the question comes up a lot as to whether or not you should roll your paint. And of course rolling gives a really even application but you can still see some marks from my wax and there are still some light areas and some dark areas. Overall, on a really flat surface, of course you're gonna get the absolute smoothest finish using a roller, but the type of roller makes a difference too. We really like these little pink rollers here that we sell at the store. I have found that these leave the least amount of texture on the surface. Um, I've tried dozens and dozens of different types of rollers and these, they put a really thin amount of paint on, which helps give you a smoother finish. So the issue comes in where, can you see the side of my board? When you are working on a piece and you've got a cabinet that's like this, when I go to roll here, I'm not gonna get necessarily to that edge you know, as I'm working onto there. I can get close, but not all the way there. So if I have to cut in, I'm gonna see a line from my brush versus the roller. So it can be a little bit tricky and you need to be mindful of that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put a second coat of wax on this because I can see that my surface does not look even, even though I rolled my paint. So, Put a little bit more wax on here. Get that second coat on. I'll just do half the board here. You can see I don't spend a tremendous amount of time putting that wax on my hair into there and I'm just doing a hard swipe to make sure that I'm not leaving any extra on my surface I'm not buffing it out I'm just wiping off that extra so I want to turn my cloth make sure I pull that off there we go now it feels nice and dry and I'm gonna let that dry before I buff that out as well all right and the last one that I did is using the oval brush like this in those multiple directions like that. I'm gonna put a little more wax on this. So back and forth, and you can see my pressure. I'm not just painting it on the surface like this, barely touching it, that's not gonna do anything. But I'm also not, you know, I'm not doing this. My bristles don't look like that. You don't need to hurt yourself to put the wax on. They are moving. And it's about the same kind of pressure that you would use if you were putting on hand cream. Take a 
take off that excess. Put another coat of wax on up here. Get that even. over here. I can see it's not absorbing enough. There we go. Perfect. So you don't really need to worry about over waxing so much if you are working in a small area and you just have a cloth where you're pulling off that excess. See I'm already starting to make it shine a little bit. All right. I'm going to do on this half that I sanded. And again, once I let this dry and buff it, you can see for yourself and which way you would prefer to do it. I can feel the difference in putting the wax on over here where the surface feels much harder. The surface feels more compressed where I'm putting it on, where this felt like it was absorbing a little bit easier. And I'm kind of moving in a couple different directions just to make sure that I haven't missed a spot. I'm pulling off that excess. Feels good. I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes and then we will polish that too. Can you hand me my board that I was painting again, please? Let's see how that's drying. Okay, fabulous. So, you can see here that the sections that I was brushing and really pushing out are pretty much dry. I've got a couple little damp spots. And over here where I started, it's still really wet because I put my, my paint on much, much heavier. You can't get the paint super, super thin when you use that nylon brush like that and you are painting with the grain. So keep that in mind that you are using a lot more paint when you use a standard paintbrush and paint with the grain. A lot more paint. Look how much Look how wet it is. Look how much longer it's taking to dry over there than it is over here. So you can see that it's a little thinner here, but you're getting better coverage and I cannot see my brush strokes here where I can see my brush strokes here. Why do you need to use extra paint on the synthetic brush? Because it won't push. It won't push far enough. The paint is such a heavy body paint, it won't push far enough when you um, have this. It just doesn't move. It's meant to lay down paint because latex is meant to just be laid down and that's the design of the brush. That's a good question. So we also get the question a lot about adding water to your paint. And um, even on our little tip sheet that we pass out and on a lot of the videos that you see, um, people will tell you to add water to your paint. And I never like adding water to my paint because a little bit goes such a long ways. So I'm going to show you on here, if I just put that little bit of water onto my brush and I drip all of that back out, look how I can, look how much water that is. Look how far I can spread that out, just that tiny bit of water. So can you imagine what it's like to add water to your paint and how thin that's going to turn out if you do that? You're just minimizing your coverage by adding water in there. And you certainly don't want to do 50-50. You would have just a big watery mix. So if you feel like you're fighting with your paint a little bit and you're having a hard time spreading it out and making it um, nice and thin, you can just dip your brush into some water like I did there and use a damp brush. Put a little water on your surface. I'm gonna add some paint to my brush here for my second coat. And you can see how it glides really, really nicely by having that little bit of water in there. Just that tiny, tiny, tiny bit can take care of that for you. So if you have a piece that has maybe some texture, some low-lying areas that you're having a hard time getting into, instead of loading your brush with a bunch more paint, 
you can just do that little bit of water. And you'll see now I'm really just spreading that paint out far and I've gotten that whole section covered in that quick amount of time. This is gonna dry nice and opaque, give me great coverage and I used far less paint, less time and it's gonna dry faster. And we'll see what that looks like when we polish it up, see what you think. All right, let's do some buffing. So I am gonna use a buffing brush here. You certainly can buff with a cloth if you want to. Um, I like buffing with a brush just because it is much, much faster. And I'll show you that difference. So if I've got a cloth and I'm working here, I need to put a lot of muscle into that to get that surface to shine. And I'm hitting my highs. I'm only hitting my highs. When I use a buffing brush, I can get down into any low surface that I have and I can shine it up very quickly. So if you're doing like kitchen cabinets or anything like that that has, you know, a fair amount of surface, oh my gosh, get yourself a buffing brush and save yourself a ton of time. Look how quick I can, I can polish that up. So I want you to look at the surface. Can you see my brush strokes? Yep. So when I feel it, this feels nice and smooth. This feels nice and smooth, absolutely. I can tell this is the side that I sanded. It's slightly smoother than this side, but it is a really subtle difference, a really subtle difference. But you can see the streaks, you can see the brush strokes, right? All right, now let's do the next one. Does, do you feel that it, it tends to work better, especially with certain colors by sanding, like making it more even? Um, you know, I think that more than anything, it helps the wax absorb a little bit more evenly and, um, but it's such a subtle difference. I really, I think you need to look at it and see if you think it's worth it. If I flip it over, I honestly don't see a difference. I can feel a little bit of a difference. This sanded side feels smoother if you are very tactile and you like, um, and you like to feel that really, really smooth feeling. That little tiny bit of that smoothing sandpaper said 320 in between your two coats of wax will just smooth that out and make it feel really, really smooth. But I don't see a big difference between the shine and the evenness. This is maybe just slightly, 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 not a huge difference. I don't know if it would be worth it to, to do that sanding in between. That really is kind of a personal personal preference, but I think that they both look equally stripey. Let's do that next board. All right, so now this is our um, board that we did. Let's see which half I waxed. This half um, is the rolled board. So this does not have wax on, this does. Buff that out. You can see there, it looks a little more even than what the other board does, right? But it's not perfect. I can still see highs and lows in that coloring, right? That's just the nature of the color. It really is. It's just the nature of the color. You're not doing anything wrong if your board looks like that. It's perfectly normal. Okay, let's do the last one so you can see the difference. Okay, so this one, okay, this was my, which way to do it? This is my sanded, this is my not sanded. Buffing. Oh, 
how this wax is still just a tip to damp. It would be a little bit nicer if we could let it dry just maybe a couple more minutes. Now look at this one. What do you see here? This feels smooth. This feels really smooth. And look at the way that the light looks. Would you agree that this one probably looks the most even of any of them? What do you think? So talking about light reflection, I brought some papers to show you. You have this specular reflection, which is what's happening when you do a board like this, moving. With your brush strokes, you are seeing the light reflect like this. When you paint in the different directions, the light is bouncing off your surface like this. So you don't see your brush strokes like you do on this one. Can you see the difference? Which one do you see more brush strokes on? The one that I painted straight or the one that I painted in all different directions? So here's another thing. So your reflection that specular reflection is straight off. If you have a glare on a super, super smooth, glossy surface, it's going to have a glare to it and it's gonna feel very sharp. What we're doing on this board is, got scoopers on my fingers, is this diffused light. So it's scattering the light in different directions. And I found a great explanation um, online. It says specular reflection is the mirror-like reflection from a surface in which the light coming from a single direction is reflected into a single outgoing direction. Like reflections on still water or polished metal are like this. When it's not perfectly smooth, then the surface and the surface has an irregular structure, the light is scattered in all different directions and we can perceive this diffused um, reflection like unpolished marble or wood. So this is gonna give you a much more natural looking surface where this is gonna give you more of that I painted in straight line surface. So again, there's our straight lines. Here is our moving in different directions. And the rolled. So I personally like this one, but that's totally up to you. Whatever look you like is perfectly fine. This is an art, not a science. So that is it for today. We would love your questions and comments. Thanks so much for tuning in to Ask Flourish. We'll see you guys next week.